wow, this is so pretty. Look at those landforms. It is a hole in the desert where you can see fire. It's so hot standing there. Ashgabat is probably one of the world's strangest cities. The skyline of Ashgabat. I'm Camilla, I make travel and geography related videos and today we are zooming in on... Turkmenistan. We are back in Central Asia, where there is a burning hole in the desert. <laughs> Let's zoom in! The name Turkmenistan can be divided into two, Turkmen and Stan. Stan is a Persian suffix meaning place of or land, and Turkmen comes from Turk, plus the suffix men that means almost Turk. So Turkmenistan can mean land of the almost Turk people. Some people, however, will argue that men is to intensify, so that the meaning will be place of the pure Turks. Turkmenistan is a landlocked country in Central Asia, bordering Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan and Iran, as well as the Caspian Sea. It is the 52nd largest country, just smaller than Spain, a little bigger than California, and comes on number 111 in population, with almost 6 million people, less than the tiny country El Salvador. It is therefore amongst the least densely populated countries on the planet. The capital city is Ashgabat and other large cities are Tegmenabat and Dazogus. And now for the extreme points. The easternmost point lies right here in the mountains on the border with Uzbekistan. The southernmost point is to be found here, surrounded by Afghanistan. We have the easternmost point touching the Caspian Sea near the town Bekdash, right here. The northernmost point lies on the border with Uzbekistan, where there is a division between farmland and deserts. So now we're measuring how regular the shape of the country is. Okay, we have the area of the rectangle. The area of Turkmenistan is almost 500,000 square kilometers. So Turkmenistan covers 47%. Now we'll zoom in on the capital Ashgabat. Here it is with the airport there. Let's see what happens in this city. There are some big roundabouts happening here. Turkmen Dovlet University, Military Institute, Ministry of Defense. Here are some large parks. Yeah, I want to take a look at those parks. Let's see if there is not a lot of street view. Hmm. No. Is there no street view in Ashgabat? Oh, there is some here. Yeah, we can try here. This is a restaurant. Cafe Bar. That's all Berdi. We'll call them there. Mongol Donut. Oh, that's kebab, I think. Yeah, he's making it right there. This is Ashgabat, it's sunny. A bench overlooking the restaurants. Let's see if there are other places we can see. It's not sure that we can see a lot more. Hmm. Here, we can see this maybe. The stadium. Oh, this is taken from outside of the stadium. Really pretty, it's all white. That's the street. Yep, a lot of white buildings here. I will tell you later about the white marble buildings, but it's obvious there are a lot of them. And they're so big! What does this mean? Watch out for steps. See if we can go some other place. Let's try there. Oh wow, this is outside of the city, it looks like. What am I standing on? Looks like they're building here. Whoa, those mountains! That's really beautiful! And there's the city. There are so many big, tall buildings there. The skyline of Ashgabat. Landscapes! When we look at Turkmenistan on a map, it looks really yellow. And that's because of the continental climates and little precipitation. Karakum Desert, or Black Desert in Turkic languages, covers a huge part of the country and has some real sand dunes. But not all of the country is covered by deserts. On the map we can see that most cities lie in green areas, like here in the south, Turkmenabat and the cities in the north. These areas are greener because of rivers. The longest river in Turkmenistan is the Amudaria. You can see it easily on the map. It starts in the tall, tall mountains of eastern Afghanistan and continues into the flatter lands of Turkmenistan and streams out into the Aral Sea in Uzbekistan. Take a look at the Uzbekistan video for more information about the Aral Sea. Another river is the Morgab that creates this green line in the arid land and feeds the town Mary with water for agriculture. Lakes. Now when I made the scripts for this episode, I started looking at this body of water, this one and this one, and I completely overlooked the big one. 
The Caspian Sea is the largest inland body of water in the world, located on the border between Europe and Asia. Looking at it on the map, I notice the coastlines are green from Iran, Azerbaijan, Russia, and then comes Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan, and the coastlines are arid again. Is this because of the low elevation? I'm not sure. If you know, please tell me so we can find out of this together. Tell me what you think. Yeah. Another body of water is this large one with a long name, the Garabogaskul Basin. It is a depression, very shallow, and forms a kind of lagoon of the Caspian Sea. A narrow rocky ridge separates them, but there is a really narrow opening in between them here. This picture here shows how narrow the ridge between them really is. And now to the tallest points. First, I want to show you the elevation of Turkmenistan. Here it is. Most of the country is super low-lying, with an average elevation of 100 to 220 meters. Higher than Tuvalu, at least. There is a higher elevation south, and an elevation of over 2,000 meters close to the capital city and the border with Iran. So the tallest point might be there. No, it's here. It is called Ayri Baba and lies at 3,138 meters or 10,295 feet on the border with Uzbekistan in the mountain range called Pamir Alai. Turkmenistan also has a low point that is worth mentioning. The Akya Gaya in Sarigamish Lake lies at about 100 meters below sea level. Let's do random street view. Hmm, where should we go? Where can we go? Um, let's try. There. Wow, this is so pretty. Look at those landforms. This looks like a sedimentary rock type. Look at, wow. There are canyons here. Look like the Badlands in South Dakota. This is called the Yangi Kala Canyon. Mm, let's try this one close to the town of Mary. Ooh, we're inside a building. And this is our tour guide. Or not, maybe it's just a tourist there too. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, it's a tall building. Wow, that looks really pretty. People sitting there. Yeah, Turkmenistan has a history that goes way back. It is on the silk routes. And I think this building just points toward that part of the history. Opposite side time. I find what lies on the opposite side of the earth by measuring 20,000 kilometers from the capital Ashgabat. Normally we land in the middle of the Pacific and this time is no exception. The closest land is probably Duchi Island, part of Pitcairn Islands, a British overseas territory. Time for some travel suggestions. Turkmenistan is one of the world's least visited countries. The seventh least visited country and traveling there just has to be interesting. It is also really challenging and pricey to get a visa there. Ashgabat is the only city with international flights in and out of the country, so unless you enter the country by land, Ashgabat is a city that you will visit. Ashgabat is probably one of the world's strangest cities. It is decorated with white marble buildings. Lots of them. Almost a thousand of them. About 80% of the city's buildings are white marble. There are also beautiful gardens, boulevards, fountains, and statues. The strange thing is, very little people walk the streets. They are empty. And the white buildings? Also empty. It is staged and the government wants to show off their wealth. This city definitely feels like a fascinating place to visit. After having visited the capital city, you could take a plane to Turkmenbashi and see the Caspian Sea before using a 4x4 to drive to the Yangi Gala Canyon, which lies 170 kilometers east of Turkmenbashi. Central Asia has landscapes that I just adore. I like how the landscapes are arid and don't have many trees. I just like it. The Yangi Kala Desert is like that, but you see it is even more special. The rock walls are as tall as 100 meters and are colored pink, red, and yellow. Researchers think it used to lie underwater, and there were massive coral reefs. The best place to get a panoramic view of this desolate landscape is a viewpoint called Jaws of Crocodile. This really looks like the more famous rock formations of the Badlands in South Dakota. From the canyon, drive through the Karakum Desert and drive to the Darvaza Gas Craters. It is a hole in the desert where you can see fire. It is also known as Door to Hell because it is so hot standing there. You might think this is a natural landscape, but it's not. It's man-made. In 1971, Soviet geologists were drilling a hole here where there is natural gas. During the drilling, an accident happened and equipment fell down in a big hole. Natural 
natural gas was coming out of the hole. The geologists were afraid that the hole would release poisonous gases, so they decided to burn the gas. They thought it would burn up within a few days, but it has been burning for almost 50 years now. No one knows for how long it will burn, but it's sure that it is one of Turkmenistan's most popular tourist attractions. After your adventure in Turkmenistan, you could either return to Ashgabat and fly home, or you could continue your trip in Central Asia by crossing the border into Uzbekistan or Kazakhstan, for instance. Turkmenistan is a country that not many people visit, but I think visiting here can be super valuable. You get to see unique cities like Ashgabat and landscapes you can't find in other places. These were some geographical facts on Turkmenistan. Next up is Turkey. And we're zooming out. Thank you for watching, guys.